Okay, so bust out your color wheels, okay? So for today, I wanna talk about complementary colors. Um, this is very, very basic. So a complementary color is basically the color across from, um, so if you were to choose a color on the color wheel, so like if I were to choose 636 purple, its complement would be straight across the color wheel, which would be 993. Okay, and then all of these. So if I were to choose this one, which is 725, its complement would be 249. Okay, Keely, don't worry about it. Seriously, if you didn't get to your color wheel, it's totally fine. So we're gonna start with complementary colors this week, and then next week we'll talk about analogous colors. And um, we're just gonna keep this super basic. And if you want to learn more, there are there's tons and tons of information on color theory. But again, I don't want to overwhelm anybody. I wanna keep this really simple so that you can go to your color wheel and say like, okay, I can make, you know, I, I can decide what colors I wanna use for my project based on the colors I have and the color wheel that I made. All right. Uh, what if you didn't put them in that order on your color wheel? Tony, so if you look at um, just my advice to you is you probably won't have every color in order and that's totally fine. It's just to give yourself a, a basic idea of what colors would go together. So um, when I first, so last week I said, the best way to figure out how to organize your color wheel is to look at a color wheel online and then do your best to line up the colors based on that. So if you have a yellow green, that's gonna go next to a true green, that's gonna go next to a blue green, and so on and so forth, okay? So um, if it's not perfect, it's okay. It doesn't, it, it honestly like does not matter. Um, even if you have like an orange across from a purple instead of a yellow across from a purple. It's still gonna be great. It does not have to be perfect, okay? Um, good question. All right, so um, a couple of the uh, projects we're gonna do, and actually we're gonna do two uh, complementary colors. Don't worry, Tony, it's okay, honestly. Um, there are so many different ways to do a color wheel and it, it honestly does not have to be perfect. The biggest thing that I wanted you to do is to be able to see the colors that you have and be like, okay, uh, these would look really cute together, you know? So um, if if you have a color wheel that you're not sure is, is in the right um, orientation around, first of all, you can always redo it. You know, you can always do another one or you can look online and say, okay, I have, in my hand, I have a purple. What's the complement to a purple? And look online if you don't know, and then it will say yellow. So then you just in your, um, you know, in your case of Tombos or Marbies or whatever, you just find a yellow, and that's the complement. So it it's just that the color wheel makes it really easy to be like, okay, I have 856, and I'm gonna use um, this one, which is 346 on my color wheel, to use that as a complement, and you can see. So if I have 856 here, I want to use 346 as my complement or 636, I want to use 993 as my complement. So it's just a very basic tool for you to say, okay, this is what I have. All right. Don't worry about it, Carolyn. <laughs> Mine's not even. Seriously, don't worry about it. It does not have to be even. It's okay, as long as you can kind of see, the best thing is that the the triangles, that's really the point is where it's pointing. That's the compliment, okay? All right. That's right, Jerry, it's just a suggestion. Yep, that's right. Okay, so for this um, very basic tutorial, we're gonna talk about two pairs of complementary colors and that's yellow and purple and also orange and blue, okay? And these are two complements I really like. And um, so this is what we'll be making. So it's basically the same stamps. It's just different color combinations based on our color wheel. All right. So any questions before we flip around and I'll show you what sets I'm using when we flip. Any questions? Okay. Okay, well I'm gonna flip us around and I'll see you on the flip, flip side. <laughs> 
Okay. And you know, you can always ask me questions from this angle too. All right. So, okay. So these are the stamp sets that I will be using for this um, tutorial. So I'll be using this container from the ornate container set. This one right here, which is 4870. And then I'm also using this stemmed flower from 4703, the little flower cart set. However, if you don't have this one, you can easily still use this one. Very similar. You don't have to use this one. I just had it in my hand and I really like this one. So I grabbed it and I want to use it. And then I'm also going to use this one, the little daisy bunch. And also the vine right here from Foliage Set 1, 4051. Okay, so to give you another little look at the projects we'll be making. So these are two complementary um, color themes, okay? So right now, so if we were just to look at this one, I want to show you the colors that I used. So I used number 636, which is this one, and then its complement, which is right across, is 993, right there. So the only colors I used in this or, or this image, this project, are these two colors. And then I also used 969 um, and then the 565 to make that gray, which is a very common, it's gonna make a neutral, it's almost gonna make an N25, but it'll have a little bit of diversity or like uh, differentiation uh, in the color in that gray to make it more um, interesting, <laughs> multi-dimensional. Okay, so I'm gonna use those two. And then um, you'll see when we go to color in the pot, we're actually still only using these two because when you have two complementary colors and you mix them, you're going to get a, a brown, but it's gonna be a different brown based on which complements you use. Okay, so um, for this one, it's going to be these two. And then when we go to this one, it's actually going to be uh these two 925 and 526 and you can see that brown is totally different because we mixed these two and that's going to give you a whole different look okay oh barbara i'm great to hear it love to hear that thanks for the stars georgia <laughs> thank you Okay, so let's jump in right now, and we're going to do this one first, okay? So we're going to change our little, little uh, glitter, <laughs> our glitter dots here to show that we're going to be using those two. And I'll zoom out a little bit here. Do we need to have the color wheel in screen? Yes or no? because I can keep it in screen if you want to look at it. I'll just be zoomed out a little bit more. Um, and then if you don't need it, then I can always um, leave it off screen. So I don't have anyone mentioning anything at this point. So, um, I'll leave it on screen and then if I need to zoom in, then I will do that, okay? Or if anyone, if you're having a hard time seeing, then I will do that. Okay, so we are going to start with the little pot here. Yes, Jerry, make your color wheel. Yes, yes, yes. Barbara, you're the only one responding. Oh, Vicki, okay, off screen, sounds good. Okay, so I'm gonna take these off and then I'll zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so we're gonna do our basic brown and dark blue uh, gray color that we typically do. So that's gonna be 969. And I'm just gonna ink this. And the gray is actually um, a nice neutral color if you want to work with complements. And then number 565. Now, when you're doing these double colors, you do need to stamp off because they're really dark. 
So I'm gonna just stamp off one time and I'm gonna do one right here and then I'll just give it a little huff and one right there. So that we can do both of our compliments. So we'll zoom in. We'll start with this one here. I'm gonna take my brush and a little bit of water. Make sure if you're just picking up your brush, you're really opening up the bristles, letting the air out in the water, push it up against the wall, open those bristles up, let the water in. Okay, so I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna start just very gently pulling out some of this color. Now this is not the main color that I want my pot, but I do want to establish some shadows in here which are gonna be under the lips in here and on the sides. So on the sides, there's going to be some shadows And on the lips. Hi Vicki, good to see you. Okay. So I'm gonna take that and just pull out some of that color. All right, now I am going to get right into my complementary colors, okay? So I'm going to start with my Daisy Bunch here, and I'm gonna put in my flowers right away just because I want to um, reserve the space for my flowers because they're going to be yellow. So if I were to have some darker flowers, I would care less about reserving the space because um, it would be able to handle the green, but because yellow is so light, I do want to um, give it the space that it needs. So I am just going to begin to stamp in some yellow flowers. And this is, for those of you curious, 9.93. And maybe I'll put a few up in here. Okay. And then now, before I put in my vines, because I want my vines to fill in in between everything, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my stems. So it's complement, this 993, remember it's complement is 636 on my color wheel. It might be a little bit different on yours and that's okay. Okay, on my color wheel, it's 636. So this is the one I'm gonna use. So 636. And keep in mind, and I mentioned this last week, but it's worth mentioning again, because most plants are gonna have leaves, we can think of green as a neutral color. So green is probably going to be in every single one of your compositions if you're doing um, you know, something floral. So you don't have to think about the green. Um, thinking about warm and cool greens and things like that is a little bit more intermediate. Don't worry about it. Just choose a green that you like and go for it, okay? So I'm gonna choose number 177 for mine. I really like um, that olive green with the yellow, but that's just a, also a personal preference of mine, so it really doesn't matter. Now, because I was chatting, the purple on my uh, bloom sort of dried out. I've got a fan on above me. So what I'm going to do is just re-ink the bloom and stamp in a couple more to darken up that bloom. And that's okay, you can totally do that. Hi Karen, good to see you too. Okay, notice when I stamped in my stems, I stamped them in a V shape. So they're in a bouquet shape, just like that. Okay, the stems come to a point and then the blooms fan out at the top. All right. Now I'm going to take my vines and I'll put my vines in in between 
the flowers that I've now put in. So again, this is 177. Okay, and I can just nestle these right in anywhere that I want to because I've already put in the most important elements into my pot. So now I'm just filling in the space in between. And I am inking once and stamping multiple times. Okay. Let me know if I'm off camera, okay? Because I am kind of twisting around and I'm zoomed in. So if I'm off camera, just let me know. All right, so I'm gonna take my brush and just dab those yellow flowers first to establish the space for them and pull them out a little bit, give them plenty of space. And then I'll take my brush and I'll go up into the purples And I can just dab these, pull out this color a little bit further. I really like to do that. And then also on the stems or the vines here. The stems of the, the um, flowers, you kind of just want to leave alone. They're really dainty and delicate to begin with. So you don't need to add water to those, just the blooms. Now for my pot, this is where it gets fun. And you know, honestly, the whole thing is fun, but this is where it gets fun because you can mix your own brown based on the two colors that you have selected your two complements. So for me, that's gonna be 993, 993, and also 636. 636. Okay, so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and a little bit of purple and I'm going to create a brownish. It's going to always look at just a little bit yellowy or a little bit purpley. That's totally fine. I'm going to mix these together and that's what I'm going to use for my pot. I'm gonna start on the outside and bring that color in. Make sure to leave your highlight in the center of the pot. If you feel like it's a harsh edge, you can always just take a little water I know, Barbara, isn't that neat? It's really, really fun to start getting into color theory because there's a lot of things that you can do um, just based on the science of a color wheel. Okay, so I'm gonna take this down. Darker areas will be on the outside. Lighter areas will be in the center. And I can zoom in just a little bit more here and give you a better look yes jerry even the pot is a complement color to the flowers that's right that's how you get these really neat compositions um using complementary colors and hey you know prior to learning about the color wheel i never thought about mixing the colors together to to get a really neat neutral um but it's a lot of fun Okay, I can just do this again. And bring it right out to the exterior. I can bring it under here a little bit. All right. Now I'm gonna take my 636, that purple, and I can just 
put it right into the design if I want to. You don't have to do this. You can just leave it as brown if you want to. It's kind of fun to add a little bit of color. You know, you could make this a more purpley brown if you wanted. If you wanted to add in some of the yellow to it. But I'm just gonna keep this purple and layer in that color. Notice when I layer in with a darker color, I keep it either at the base of that or just on the outside. So I'm gonna just do a little line of that darker purple and that's gonna keep us nice and contrasted. And then for my shadow, I can always just grab a little bit. I can use either purple or I could grab a little bit of the color down here and just pull it out and leave it in that color scheme. Okay, so that is our yellow and purple complement which is going to be $9.93 for those of you just joining and $6.36. Okay, now we are going to scooch this guy over to $9.25, which is gonna be our orange, and this one to $5.26, which is gonna be our really bright blue. Okay, so for the next one, we're going to do that same pot, which we, we have already stamped down. So we'll pull the shadows out again, just like we did on the previous. So we're gonna use the same stamps, the same techniques, but we're gonna use different colors on this one. And you'll see just how changed this will look when we use a different complement. Any questions so far? I'll zoom in a little bit more. Pulling this color out. Thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl says, I love everything you do. I learn something new every time I watch one of your videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate that encouragement. I just, I love coming on here and doing these videos because for me, some of these techniques really changed the way that I did watercolor. And it's really exciting for me to be able to share this with you because I know it will help you too. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to use 925. So I'll go ahead and stamp off. Where's my little stamp off paper? I'm going to stamp off that yellow. And I'm going to take the 925. And I'm just going to stamp this off a few times just to make sure I got the yellow totally off. See how strong that orange is? It's, the yellow is not going to stand a chance. Um, when I put it up against this orange, so I'm not too worried about that. But I'm going to take that 925 and I'm going to start stamping in this orange. And this is a very, very bright <laughs> color. So beautiful, intense. Okay. I think I'm a little off screen here. All right, and I'll take my stemmed flower and I'll stamp this one off too. This had, I think, quite a bit of purple on it. So I'll take that 526. You could either leave the purple on or just stamp it off. Most of that purple's off, so I'm gonna go in now with the 526. Go right over those blooms. And I'm gonna use that same 177 again. Everything's gonna be the same except our complements. Okay, and I'm stamping in a whole bunch of these blue blooms. Okay. 
Diane, that's so funny to hear you say that. Diane says, I lo love learning from you as well. I just can't keep up with you. I'm a slow painter. Um, for those of you that don't know, Diane is an incredible painter. Um, her and Ruth Ann say the same things, um, that they're slow <laughs> and that they love to learn. But honestly, I think that they could be teaching these, um, these videos. <laughs> they are so, so good. And actually, there are so many talented artists on the Art Impression Stamp Group, which is not our official group, but it's an amazing group um, that was started by Carla Eckes Morgan. And she started this stamp group, uh, and it's just grown. I think there's 2,500 people now. Um, so we always like to pop in there and see what everyone's making. But absolutely love the artistry that we see on that page. So if you are not a group member, get over there and um, go request go request to access the page. And then once you get in, you can start sharing your own works. So 177 again. Okay. And I'm going to take that vine and just began to put it in between these flowers. And maybe down here, I want to put a few in. You know, you're never gonna have it be the exact same, um, even if you try <laughs> on your different projects. So just appreciate the differences that you see Georgia, you're another one, girl. Beautiful work. Gorgeous work. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to dab, dab, dab. Look at how that orange just pops. And I want to do my lighter colors first just to give them the space that they need to expand before I do the intense colors like the green. Okay. And then I'm going to dab my little blooms. All right. And I'm gonna take my brush now and go into the greens. Barbara, I saw you commented. Let's see, let's see, what'd you say? I'm gonna get this in first and then I'll look. So, Barbara says, I believe you're getting a degree in science. Can you incorporate your amazing art skills in your science major? You're multi-talented. Barbara, I am. I'm almost done. I have one more final. Uh, I'm getting my microbiology degree. And yes, I have done some watercolors, uh, <laughs> making some microbial creatures <laughs> with the watercolors. So yes, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a, definitely a little bit different than the art impressions technique, but, uh, it's a blast for sure. Okay. So now I'm going to grab my palette and we're going to mix our two colors. Hi, Deanna. Welcome. Um, let's see. My five and a half is watching too from Hong Kong. She Wants to convey a message that she's an artist too. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. I'm in. Oh, I love that. She will be off to school soon. We'll miss the video. Oh, please say hello to her. Tell her we're very proud of her for um, working on her art skills. Yes, she is an artist. Absolutely. <laughs> very sweet. Okay, 925. 925 and also 526 526 hi Teresa you're not late you are perfectly on time <laughs> and you know what you can always watch back let's see thank you Janet Janet says I just got home was listening and am amazed at what you're teaching love how you break this down oh thank you I love to hear that I just I want to just 
you know, help you guys out as much as I can. Because I know, you know, color theory can be kind of tough. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So um, I'm just showing you what has helped me in the past in hopes that it helps you too. Okay, so I'm going to take a mix of 526 and 925 and I'm going to start putting this onto my pot here. And you can see it's a little bit more gray than the other one, huh? So depending on how you mix these, you are going to get a totally different brown. So this one is more of a grayish brown, which I love. It's so pretty. So I'm going to grab that and we'll add that color to the edges first and then work our way in. All right, so the darkness, the darker area is going to be on the edge. And then as it gets to the center, it will get lighter because we still need our highlight in the center. So we'll mix these together. We'll get a little bit of a shadow here and there. Okay, so I'm gonna take that color and just add that to the edges. Okay, now I'm gonna take my blue and put it into the ribbon and all the little details in here like I did with the purple. So I'm just going to angle this just for my arm. <laughs> so I'm gonna come in here and we'll put that blue in. I love blue and orange. I think it's so pretty together. And remember, we want to keep a highlight, at least some, in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we do want to keep some white space. All right, just pulling that in. Take a little bit more of that 526. Put it on the edge. and layer that in. Okay. Very complimentary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, so we'll take a little bit of that color, maybe a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and we'll add our shadow down in here. So you can see, just based on our compliments, how different we can get these to look. Okay. All right. Oh, Nell, you are so sweet. But it's probably true. Nell says that my work has matured over the years <laughs> that she's watched me. And that's that's definitely true. I think I think we just grow and change as we go and you know, we can appreciate the changes that we make. And um, the goal is to just let our true artist come out. And, you know, it's it's a work in progress for sure. But I always appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take my twin tone. And I'll just sign one of these because they're on the same paper. So we can just assume that they're together. All right, everyone, I can zoom in a little bit if you want to get another little look here. And I hope that that was helpful for compliments. Um, next week, we are going to be using, which hasn't been decided yet. <laughs> I'm directing... <laughs> My beautiful uh, assistant, who happens to be my gorgeous mother, <laughs> who's here with me, she is going to be picking out what we will be doing for next week's. Ooh, I like it. So next week, we are going to be using analogous colors, and we're going to be doing the watercolor window set. Okay, so 5014 watercolor window set. And we're going to be doing analogous colors. So analogous colors are colors that are right next to each other. So for example, like these three right here, these this is an analogous um, 
color, uh, what is that word? <laughs> An analogous color um, theme, basically, is, um, or like these three, and it has to be three. So uh, to have an analogous color theme, it's got to be three colors right next to each other. And um, we're going to do a couple of those next week. And we are going to be using the watercolor window set. So if you have this, snag it. And um, look how cute the little example is here. But um, I am going to flip us back over and I will wish you all a very good night. So hang on with me one second. Okay, maybe. Hi! <laughs> I always get nervous because um, it's so easy to click the off button on the phone. So I'm like, oh no. Um, okay, so next week is the window. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you haven't made your color wheel, get to making it, okay? And um, a little peek at what we did um, with this angle. You can see this is a much different look than that one, huh? This is much warmer and this is much cooler. So um, if you make this, tag me. I would love to see it. And I love you all. I will see you next week. Mwah. Bye.